Hey everybody, it's Tim Gerling. Uh, welcome to Tim's Vinyl Confessions, the first Tim's Vinyl Confessions of 2018. It's the way the calendar falls. So Happy New Year everyone. Hope you had a great uh, 2017. Hope this one's better for you. Blah blah blah. All that regular stuff. Uh, and thanks for hanging in there. This will be uh, in September. This will be four years of uh, doing Tim's Vinyl Confessions. It's been a lot of fun. So I thought I'd start the new year off with a bang and it doesn't get more bang than ACDC. So I thought I'd go through my ACDC CD collection. Uh, now, I was a little bit late to start buying ACDC discs, so most of what I've got to a certain point come from the 1994 Atlantic remasters. They did that for a lot of groups. Uh, they did that for uh, Led Zeppelin and Bad Company and Yes and Foreigner and whoever was on the label. So a lot of my discs come from there, and anybody that knows uh, anything about ACDC knows that their Australian releases early on were much different than the rest of the world. So I'll try to get into some of those key differences in uh, the discs. And fortunately for, for people like me, uh, a few years ago they put a wonderful little box set that kind of tied everything up nice and neat. So we'll get started. Now the first ACDC album came out in their native Australia all the way back in 1974. And uh, what I've got is this is just a printout to show you, and it was this album. It's just a paper printout, high voltage. Now, if you've got high voltage, you may be thinking, well, it's a totally different cover. Well, it was practically a different album, but uh, I kept this printout to put in the, uh, the version of the CD that I bought. That uh, This was an album that came out in 1976 when they signed a worldwide deal with Atlantic, uh, to be specific, Atco Records. And like a lot of bands do that are successful in their home country and then they get a chance to go to a broader audience, sometimes a record label will just take the best of whatever albums they've got and put it out as a compilation. And that's where this came from. What uh, most of us know as the High Voltage album, the classic album cover. Right from the start, the, the logo is in place and uh, one of many covers that just feature Angus Young on the cover. This is actually a compilation. So... So it's a long way to the top, rock and roll singer, the Jack, Livewire, TNT. There's there's just classic songs galore on here. This is a Canadian Columbia House version, and it is part of the remastered series. There's what the disc itself looks like with the uh, multicolored Atco logo, logo. Atco, of course, just a division of Atlantic. And the booklet that came with it, these, uh, these funny little letters uh, concerning each band member. Really funny. Uh, vinyl's really a better spot to try and read those. And not much in it. But uh, it's a great, you know, I still think of it as an album, even though it is a compilation. You know, it's it's a great album, and, and uh, right from the beginning it wasn't a band that uh, was all that different. Although there were some early tracks that didn't make the international release of High Voltage. Uh, that, that were a little bit different. We'll get to that later. The only Australian-only album I have, I, I made a point to get it, because it's the only one that has a different title. Technically, what I'm about to show you is the second ACDC album, and it only originally came out in Australia in 1975. This is TNT. There's no internationally released ACDC album called TNT. Hold it up a little closer there. This is probably a, a mid-80s issue of it. It's uh, distributed by CBS. If you take a look at those song titles, a lot of these songs, a lot of what this album is, ended up on the international high voltage release. And the ones that didn't, you probably still recognize those titles. And this is a very basic release. There's no nothing in it for credits. Just a single panel um, square there with the song titles on them. So the third ACDC album came out in 1976 in Australia. It didn't come out until 1981 in the rest of the world. It too originally had a different album cover. It came out like this. Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. This album cover makes more sense when you see the, the, the reverse of it, because it's got the rest of the band on it. This is cartoon drawing. Kind of liked that style back then. And um, 
So after they became really big with Back in Black, and I guess the band wasn't thrilled about earlier material being released at this point because they just got Brian Johnson as lead singer, but it came out and it sold you know three million off the bat anyway. So this is the remastered uh, the, the the 1981 issue cover. If it looks like it was done by Hypnosis, the uh, the famous British company that uh, does these spacey album covers, it was. Makes no sense whatsoever. Probably just a stock image laying around. And uh, this album mostly was intact, although there are some differences between it and the Australian version. And it's got uh, lyrics and photos of the band. And like the front cover, their, their eyes are blacked out. And this is also, this is a Canadian version. It wasn't a Columbia House one. It was just a store-bought. And a different Atco label on this one for Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Uh, next one to come out. First ACDC album to actually chart in the States, 1977, Let There Be Rock. Uh, this is an album that the band themselves, I think, has always had a great love for because there are songs on here that they've done at just about every concert and every set list, every tour. Uh, Dog Eat Dog, of course, the title song, Let There Be Rock. Uh, Hell Ain't a Bad Place to Be, Whole Lot of Rosie. There's no ACDC show where they don't do that one. So this came out in 1977. First time you see the classic ACDC logo on a new album, because it was on um, high voltage, but it wasn't quite like this. It stayed like this pretty much for the rest of their career. And this is a Canadian reissue on... Atco. But in Australia, it had this cover on it, a very understated cover. I, I like the other one better. Maybe that's because I'm just more used to seeing it. And not much inside it for, you know, the cliche, let the music do the talking, really fits here because it's ACDC. There's not a lot to say. Just, just listen to it. <laughs> um, 1978, probably uh, the least commercially successful of the Bon Scott era albums, but probably the most critically acclaimed, I think, if I had to make a guess, it's because the songs aren't played to death. Um, but I don't know. Either way, it's a cool album. <laughs> Ridiculously low budget cover that I still like. Power Age, 1978. This is a very 70s thing, and I don't know what you call it when you take, I guess you'd call it a distressed font. And, uh, you know, wires coming out there. Just ridiculous, but in a good way. Uh, this is another um, just Canadian version. Back cover. Uh, some classics off of this one. Rock and Roll Damnation, Riff Raff, Sin City. It's good stuff. This, this has the classic red and green Atlantic logo, not Atco at this point. Although between the originals and the remastered, it kind of got mixed up which ones were on which label. And I do like to mention, too, all of these remastered ones indicate, you know, originally released as, it has the original serial number on it. Just to, well, for, they do that, and I like that kind of continuity as well. So the original CDs would have had the original um, serial numbers on them. So, also in 1978... Celebrating an era when rock bands were very prolific and just album after album. Two albums the same year. This one is a live album, a single disc live album. If you want blood, you got it. Never did read how they actually did this album cover. It looks very real. <laughs> Disturbingly so. There's the back cover. So there's two versions of it. So highlights from the earlier albums. Um, what's interesting is that last song, Rocker, at this point, when this came out, was the first time this came out in North America because it ended up on the... Uh, remastered version of Dirty Deeds, which didn't come out till 81. This is a Canadian Columbia House version. I think I've got that right about which song it was. Red and green Atlantic logo, just like the record would have on its label. So this was made to uh, wrap around. If you want blood, you've got it. It's interesting because that, of course, they there's not a song called that on here, but they use that song title very, very soon. So, as most of people know, 1979 is the breakthrough ACDC album, Worldwide Highway to Hell. And this really is a fantastic album from start to finish. Even the songs that don't get a lot of radio play, like Touch Too Much and Love Hungry Man, it's all good. 
just solid. And the first album to be produced, the first of three to be produced by Mutt Lang. So don't expect a, you know, an overproduced sort of Def Leppard Brian Adams sound, which I also like, but doesn't fit ACDC. Just an exceptionally well-recorded album here, and, and really the two to follow. And some of their best songs, too. And this is a Canadian Columbia House version. And for whatever reason, we're back to APCO now. Not really sure why, but... And just again, the credits and how it was originally issued. And of course, one of the biggest selling albums of all time, Back in Black. And the original CD, if you've ever seen it, the logo's huge, comes to about here, and the title goes all along the, the bottom here. This is more like what the record looked like, but the record, at least all the ones I've seen, is completely black, except these parts are embossed, and if you turn it a certain way in the light, you can read them. There's really not much to say about this album, other than it's amazing. It's amazingly good. Um, effortless to listen to. And even the overplayed songs don't like I can hear Back in Black a million times and I never get tired of that riff. It's on APCO for some reason because originally this was an Atlantic release. It's all the same label but it's just different divisions of it so I don't know where they decided to um, make that distinction. I always thought it was interesting how they have live shots of everyone except Brian Johnson who I suppose at the time these photos were taken had never performed live with them. So we're into the 80s now multi-million selling albums, most of them anyway. Uh, first number one album that they ever had, for those about to rock, we salute you. This came out in 1981. Simple but effective cover there. Leads into what they did with the title song in concert. This is a Canadian version, the remastered edition. And uh, most of what they have for credits is printed on the back here under the song titles. And inside is just a photo of the band, which they, I think there was a poster that must have, I've seen this, this picture many, many times. They must have sold a poster with this live shot on it. And uh, much like Power Age is considered to be sort of the Dark Horse album of the Bon Scott years, I think the, un the overlooked, underrated classic of the Brian Johnson years came out in 1983. Flick of the Switch. Again, this had no big songs off it initially, only went gold as compared to the platinum that had come before. But uh, I really like this album. This was the last one that Phil Rudd appeared on for about 12 years. And uh, when you want to listen to ACDC but you want to listen to something different, is this album is the one to pick up. Now they produced it themselves. To me it doesn't sound all that different than their previous ones. Just very well recorded. The title song is amazingly good, um, you know, uh, Rising Power, it's just good uh, nervous shakedown. <clears throat> and they're back to Atlantic now, for whatever reason, and this is the red and black logo. Again, very little in it for credit. So, um, in 1984... For some reason, uh, Atlantic realizing that, you know, ACDC were just gaining in popularity and uh, maybe it was taking a while to get a new album out. They wanted to put some sort of product out. They gathered up a few, far from all, but a few of the songs that only appeared on the Australian versions of the ACDC album and put them out as an EP called 74 Jailbreak. Now, obviously, that's a much newer photo. That's not a 74 photo of Angus Young. But this originally came out in 1984. And only five songs. And all of these songs appeared on previous Australian albums. Including one, I mean, it went on to become a classic for them, Jailbreak. It was already well known in Australia, but now it's a staple of their sets. Uh, it originally appeared on Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, for instance. And the last song on here, Baby Please Don't Go, covered the old blues song. Many people have done it, uh, including Aerosmith and Lizzie, many, many others. It was actually their first Australian hit, and it appears on here. And it was originally on the Australian High Voltage album. So if you just want to listen to a little classic ACDC, just pop this one on. And for the first time, the CD has all the lyrics in it. So that's... Um, 
at this point now, uh, the remasters, I think that's as far as the remasters had gone when I started buying ACDC CDs. So now we get some original issues here. This is Fly on the Wall. It originally came out in 1985 on Atlantic Records, and this is an original uh, Canadian Columbia House issue. Not generally looked at as one of their better albums, although, I mean, it does have some good songs on it. Sink the Paint, Shake Your Foundations. Um, not the best production. Vocals are mixed a little far back in the, in the mix. This is the first one that Simon Wright is um, pictured on. He was uh, part of the promotional materials, including the videos for Flick of the Switch, but Phil Rudd had actually finished his drum tracks before he left. And this one has lyrics in it as well. In 1986, not exactly a new ACDC album, not exactly the greatest hits. It just kind of came out. Who Made Who? Uh, this serves as the soundtrack to the Stephen King film Maximum Overdrive. It's all ACDC music on here. One new song in the title song, which of course became a staple for them. A couple of new instrumentals, the rest are previously released songs from kind of all over their career. This is a Canadian issue. You can see here the official soundtrack. So it's a soundtrack. And it's kind of, a, it's not a hits album, but it does have You Shook Me All Night Long on here for those about to rock. Hell's Bells, of course, Who Made Who. So it does serve as, I guess, an introduction to ACDC. That's what typical Atlantic discs look like at the time. Photo of the group. Uh, those are shots from the video for the title song. And um, inside the booklet, not a lot. And the next one to come out was 1988 blow up your video kind of a, a dated title but I guess they can get away with it again on Atlantic this is a US version that was distributed by Columbia House starts off with a couple of great songs heat seeker and that's the way I want to rock and roll after that it doesn't really stand it, it's it's getting to the point where the songs don't exactly stand out in my opinion maybe this is somebody's favorite ACDC album but uh, my opinion is just not one I reach for a lot. Except it does have two fantastic songs on it. Not much in it, again, except for pictures. And so throughout much of the 80s, like after Back in Black, there was kind of a gradual drop in sales, although I think Who Made Who sold a lot of copies just for all those recognizable songs, and it was on a, affiliated with the movie, so it got a little press because of that. A big comeback, and for people my age, a lot of Folks, first ACDC album came out in 1990, The Razor's Edge. This is the one and only time that they worked on a studio album with the late Bruce Fairburn, who, oddly for ACDC, because they were never poppy, they were never like a pop metal band of any sort, but um, he had just come off producing, I think, Poison's Flesh and Blood. Of course, he helped Aerosmith with their comeback, and Bon Jovi, and countless others. I've talked about Bruce Fairburn and the team of him and Bob Rock, although Bob Rock's not affiliated with this. Would actually like to hear what Bob Rock would do with an ACDC album, but that's another story. So this was a big, big comeback for them. And uh, one main reason for that is the opening song, Thunderstruck. I mean, it's ubiquitous now. It's everywhere. I don't need to tell you anything more about it. Money Talks off of this actually, believe it or not, became the highest charting ACDC single. Got all the way to number 23 on the pop charts. So this is a Canadian version uh, distributed by Columbia House. They're back on ATCO at this point, and that's how they... They stayed for a while, I guess, until the, the inner workings of the record company itself changed. Still not much in it for credits, even with a big album like this. That's just ACDC. It's just, they don't have a lot to say other than the music. So this, um, the, it was a long tour. There was some tragedy with that tour as well, but they went all over the world, and in 1992, the, the tour was commemorated with this live album, which came out in multiple formats, single disc, double disc. It came out uh, live in Donington video, which is close to the same set list. Now, this is the only one of the Sony remastered that came out in the uh, 
mid 2000s when they switched from Atlantic, Atco, whatever over to Sony. Simply because I never bothered picking this up, this became the only one of the Sony issues that I now have, or Epic to be exact. Good track listing. You know, all the way back to Jailbreak and the Jack, and they've never shied away from um, playing the early material. Here's Rosie, of course. Originally, this would have came come in a long box with... Uh, I think this did have some sort of special packaging with the original issue, and there's a booklet that comes with it. And Not much in this. You know, there is a little bit of a write-up that wouldn't have been with the original one because it is the remastered version of it. Next ACDC album to come out so it sees the return of Phil Rudd, so it's kind of a classic lineup again. Ball Breaker, 1995. And this is on East West because uh, ATCO had kind of morphed into East West, which would eventually switch to um, Electra, which is why this now has uh, an Electra numbering on it. But this is a Canadian Columbia House edition. Artwork inside this is pretty cool. It was done by, um, right off the bat I'm going to say Jim Shooter, but I could be wrong about the name of the Marvel Comics artist. I will find that out as I look through here. But every, you know, you can tell. it's It looks like a comic book. All of the lyrics. Uh, some illustrations to go with it. Well, I am going to find out right about who the uh, the actual artist is here. Art provided by Marvel. I guess it doesn't say. Why did I say Jim Shooter? Probably just a name I remember from uh, reading some of the old Marvel comics. But yeah, uh, and that was, you know, of course it was again, it was a successful album. And ACDC were one of those handful of bands to survive the grunge era. Not that they were ever a hair metal band or anything like that, but they were a traditional band. But they're just one of those bands, like even, you know, the grunge bands like ACDC, the punk bands like ACDC, the alternative bands like ACDC. The hair metal bands love ACDC, so it was just one of those things. They were able to ride out that whole storm as if it didn't affect them at all. Uh, proving a lot of critics wrong, I might add. So now there's a gap before a new studio album, but in 1997, they put out kind of a, I'm going to call it a, what it is, a curious release. A uh, tribute to Bon Scott, who died tragically in 1980. Um, so a tribute to him is not a surprise, but what they did, well, I'll just show you. It's a box set that came up called Bonfire. And this is a, it's, it, it's a U.S. Uh, copyright on here, but I did get this from Canadian Columbia House. They just didn't bother, I guess, branding their own versions of box sets. And so this is a, uh, well, they call it a four-disc set. It's actually a five-disc set because this, the second portion of it is a double CD into a, of itself. And I'll go through each one individually. There's some worthwhile stuff on here, but at the time and for many, many years, I thought it a missed opportunity. Huge, oh, well, inside of the, the, the box, the box top, is an old, old photo of Bon Scott when he was a kid. A uh, huge poster that comes with this. And I believe it's just of the front cover. Let me find out here. Yeah, it's, a, it's just of the front cover, and there's another shot of him on the back. So booklet that comes with it. I mean, it goes in, I learned a lot about the early years of ACDC by reading this um, book here. We'll get into the discs themselves. The, the uh, really cool one here, apparently it was a heavily bootleg radio show for a long time. This live at the Atlantic Studios. Uh, they did this very early on in their career, probably 76 or 77. I'm going to say 77 because it doesn't get any newer than uh, stuff from uh, Let There Be Rock. It was recorded live in Atlantic Studios for a very, very small audience. And it's just very raw, very, very live versions of some of their earliest material. Uh, the second disc on here, or the second component of this, is actually uh, a double disc set. It's the first time that the just the music from their Let There Be Rock movie came out, which came out in 1970. Well, it was shot in 1979 on the Highway to Hell tour, released sometime in the 80s, of course, after Bon Scott passed on. 
And so if anybody just really liked the versions of the songs in there but wanted to listen to them, this was the first time that you could do that. So it's a double disc set there. Kind of, all that is is the back shot from Let There Be Rock. And they also included, I'm not going to bother showing it to you, but just another remastered version of Back in Black, which never, never made any sense to me, because I know that they always intended for that album to be a tribute to Bond, but who doesn't have Back in Black that would be buying a box set? So that was kind of a, you know, added value that was of no value, in my opinion. But what's really cool is this disc here called Volts. These, this is the closest to, to the really, um, you know, treasured stuff on here. This has early versions of some of the songs. Uh, there's a song on here called Dirty Eyes, which actually made the mainstream rock charts, which when you hear it, you go, oh, that's a whole lot of Rosie with different lyrics. It's also got uh, some live tracks on here. Uh, the only thing on here that was completely unreleased was their version of Chuck Berry's School Days, which was originally from the Australian High Voltage album. So it's got some interesting stuff on it, but they're missing a lot of that material that was on the Australian only albums that didn't make the remastered series either the Atlantic ones from the mid 90s or the Sony ones from the mid 2000s so it's like leaving a lot of songs on the table that, that a lot of diehard fans getting expensive to get those imports of those early albums but more on that later um, I did an episode where I went through tribute albums, and that's not something I like to talk about a lot because most of them are just really not that good. But I did buy this one. This is called Thunderbolt. It came out in 1997. Uh, good track listing on here and some excellent performances by various people on here. And I went into it in detail in the tribute episode, but I will say this as a giant Y&T fan, the, the main reason that I bought this is because Dave Menachetti is on here and he does a version of Night Prowler, which is awesome and... Um, Y&T, by the way, opened for ACDC overseas on the For Those About to Rock tour, and they've always been close. So, next new ACDC album came out in 2000, Stiff Upper Lip. Uh, this was the another one on East West. This is a Columbia House issue from Canada. Another big album for them people. I think with every ACDC album that comes out, if you get two or three kind of you know good songs on there, that's kind of enough. It's just enough to know that they're still out there and kicking. Never all that much in, in here for, you know, you don't glean a lot of information from reading the, the booklets to the ACDC albums, unless you get um, you know, a box set or something like that. Then a long, long, long wait uh, until 2008 when they came back with Black Ice. And uh, th this was released in different colors. I like the color blue, so the one I have is blue. This was a Walmart exclusive uh, for a short time, I think, the only place you could get it. This became a number one album and is actually quite good. Um, hard to read the song titles on there. You can see them in person, though. Um, oh, here we go. There's another. And there's a fairly substantial booklet in here. A lot of photos more than anything else. And it's got all the lyrics to the songs too. This is actually the one time that I've seen um, ACDC in concert. And that's what the disc itself looks like. And this time around this was on Columbia. So even though like Epic reissued their albums, uh, Columbia actually issued this disc, who knows why. So I mentioned earlier of all those leftover Australian only songs, what was going to, you know, where, where is the person going to get them? Well, they answered that question. Uh, in 2009, a very, very cool thing came out, and it came out in multiple formats. This is the one I've got. This is called Backtracks. Uh, this is made to look like a, an amp. And there are deluxe versions of this. You could actually get a working amp head. It didn't have very many, many watts, but it was kind of a cool concept. This is a little... Um, this came on it. I, it's impossible to kind of keep it in good condition. But this, this is it for capturing those stray songs all the way back to the very first album all the way through. So, disc one. So you've got Stick Around. 
Love Song, which was ACDC's only ballad. Yes, it's a ballad. Check it out. Uh, you know, Crapsody in Blue, Cold Hearted Man. Great tune. Uh, Big Gun from the Last Action Hero soundtrack. This collects all those stray studio songs. Uh, CD2 is some live rarities. Songs that you don't hear a lot in concert, like Guns for Hire and This House is on Fire, uh, Dog Eat Dog. Disc 3. Now, in 2005, they put out a, a double disc set of uh, videos called Family Jewels, which uh, covered all the way up through The Razor's Edge. This disc 3 picks up from Big Gun and goes through Ball Breakers to Forever Lip, all the way up to the videos from the Black Ice album. So, it's a cool package, and it's the quality that uh, you would hope to find with an ACDC package. It's on uh, Columbia Sony. And, again, to have a, a, a ready disc of all of those rare songs was very, very cool and very much. And I'm glad that there is an affordable version. You didn't just have to buy a very, you know, exorbitantly expensive version to get those songs. They're kind of, a, kind of like the Who Made Who album, another soundtrack. In 2010, this came out, Iron Man 2. Now... They call this the soundtrack to Iron Man 2, but there's hardly any ACDC in the, in the movie. But what this is, is the closest thing to an actual ACDC Greatest Hits album. This came out on Columbia. Nice little hard booklet here. No new songs on it, although Shoot to Thrill was released as a video. Does contain Cold Hearted Man, but I mean, this has Back in Black, Thunderstruck, uh, Let There Be Rock, Highway to Hell, TNT... This is the closest thing to an ACDC Greatest Hits album that has ever been. There's also some bonus DVDs on here, or bonus videos on here. And uh, a cool little write-up here from uh, David Frick at Rolling Stone. And, you know, as a fan of the Marvel Comics movies, this is a cool little, you know, companion piece, even though it really has very little to do with the movie. A couple more things to show you. The Black Ice Tour was commemorated with a live album that came out three years later. I love the name of this place, Live at River Plate. Such an odd name for a place, but I like it. So this is the, uh, the Black Ice Tour, which I actually saw again. I saw it in 2009. So it's pretty much the sound, the, uh, the set list that I would have seen. This was released on Columbia in 2012. Just a solid live album, and a good set list. And to date, the newest ACDC album came out in 2014. With For a band that kind of stays under the radar, they, they were getting some press, but not for good reasons. Uh, drummer Phil Rudd got into some legal issues. He played on the album, but is not pictured on it anywhere. And unfortunately, the driving force behind ACDC, Malcolm Young, the quiet young brother, uh, diagnosed with some uh, some some health issues and was sidelined. Now for that tour, we I mean a lot of things happened with tours. So we won't get into that, but here's the album, Rock or Bust, and it's lenticular like a Kiss Psycho Circus. And yeah, you can sit there and stare at that for hours. So this came out in Columbia in late 2014, and again was a successful album. I mean by today's standards. Simple but effective design on the, the disc itself. And there it is, the Brothers Young. I wonder what the Y&T guys thought when they put in Rock We Trust on there, because that was the name of their most successful album way back in 84. There's the booklet. And uh, just a few like, snippets from the lyrics, not full lyrics. Yeah, and a dedication on here. Most important of all, thanks to Mal, Malcolm, who made it all possible. So, like I said, this is a band that they don't they don't talk a lot, you know, as far as the press goes. It was kind of odd that they didn't have Phil Rudd. He didn't show up for the photo sessions. In case you're wondering, that guy there is Steve Young. Now, Steve is actually the nephew of Angus and Malcolm Young, who filled in for Malcolm once before on the Blow Up Your Video Tour, because he was sidelined. So... He's been that second rhythm guitarist ever since. So, like I said, there's not a lot to say about ACDC past their music, but 
Uh, hope you enjoyed looking through those discs. Maybe if you've got some, uh, some discs that are different than mine, would love to see pictures of them if you want to post them below, especially if you're on the Facebook there, post them in the comments. And thanks for watching this edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions.